Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with Easy and B3000 Filter Measurements. In this presentation, we'll show how to make basic filter transmission and reflection measurements using a Rodian Schwartz ZMB3000 series vector network analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic knowledge of radio frequency filters and how they're measured. If you're unfamiliar with this topic, or if you'd like a review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Filter Measurements before beginning this presentation. Let's start with a brief review of the two types of filter measurements. Transmission, or S21 measurements, are the most common filter measurement. And in this case, we're primarily concerned with the magnitude response of the filter. That is, how much the filter attenuates signals as a function of frequency. Transmission measurement results are therefore most often shown as a plot of magnitude versus frequency. The other type of filter measurement is reflection, or S11 measurements where we measure how much power the filter reflects back to the source. Recall that most filters attenuate signals by reflecting them rather than by absorbing them. Filter reflection measurements are, however, much less common than transmission measurements. Because reflections are the result of an intentional impedance mismatch, reflection measurements are often concerned with both magnitude and complex impedance. And thus, reflection measurement results are often shown as standing wave ratio or return loss, or as traces on a Smith chart. In this presentation, we'll look at both types of measurements, beginning with the more common transmission measurements. There are six basic steps in making filter transmission measurements. Selecting transmission as the measurement type, configuring the measurement frequency range, configuring the source power, configuring sweep parameters such as number of trace points and IF bandwidth, performing an appropriate calibration, and viewing slash analyzing the results. Over the next few minutes, we'll walk through this process step by step. To select the measurement type on the ZMB3000, we first select measure and then choose S parameters. Filter transmission measurements are normally S21 measurements meaning that the filter input is connected to port 1 on the ZMB, and the filter output is connected to port 2 on the ZMB. As we mentioned a few moments ago, filter transmission measurements are mostly concerned with attenuation as a function of frequency, so the best trace format for this measurement is dB magnitude. This is the default trace format, but it can also be chosen by selecting Format dB Mag. Note that by default, the measurement sweep will run automatically and continuously. Next, we need to configure the frequency range, and this is entered from the Stimulus menu. There are two ways in which frequency range can be entered, either as start and stop frequencies, or as a center frequency and span. For example, a center of 750 MHz and a span of 100 MHz is the same as a start frequency of 700 MHz and a stop frequency of 800 MHz. Regardless of how the limits are entered, the range should normally be chosen in such a way as to capture both the filter passband as well as at least some portion of the stop band or bands. The source power delivered to the filter input is configured either under the Stimulus tab or it can be configured using the Power Bandwidth Average button. On the ZMB3000, the maximum source power depends on the selected frequency range. It's important to keep in mind that in some cases, setting the generator output power too low can lead to inaccurate measurement results. When measuring filters, source power often should be set as high as possible to enable more accurate measurements of attenuation or rejection within the stop band. Another important parameter is the number of sweep points. Recall that VNAs make measurements at discrete points over the defined frequency range or span, and the number of sweep points is configured by going to Channel and then Sweep. Increasing the number of points will generally increase the resolution of the measurement, but will also increase the measurement time. 
by leaving the auto switch enabled, the ZMP3000 will minimize the required total sweep time. Manually setting sweep time is possible, but is not recommended. The total time for one sweep is automatically calculated and or displayed, and this is primarily a function not just of the number of sweep points, but also of the IF bandwidth, something we'll discuss in more detail in just a few moments. But for now, let's focus on the effect of number of sweep points on sweep time. In this example, we're using only 1001 sweep points and have a total measurement time of just under 11 milliseconds. Keeping all other settings the same and increasing the number of points to 25,001, sweep time increases almost 50 fold to 542 milliseconds. Again, it's important to keep in mind that increasing the number of points will also increase the total sweep time. As mentioned earlier, IF bandwidth also impacts sweep time. IF bandwidth defines the width of the filter used to measure power at each discrete sweep or trace point. Since narrower filters allow in less noise than wider filters, lowering the IF bandwidth will reduce the amount of noise contained in a measurement, and this is almost always desirable. However, using a lower IF bandwidth will also increase overall sweep or measurement time, since it takes longer for a narrower filter to settle or obtain a stable power reading. On the ZMB3000, IF bandwidth is configured by pressing the Power Bandwidth Average button and then selecting Bandwidth. Note that bandwidth can only be set in discrete steps, for example, 10 Hz, 100 Hz, 1 kHz, etc. Let's look at an example of the effect of IF bandwidth. This measurement was made with a relatively high IF bandwidth of 1 MHz and thus has a very fast sweep time of only 2.25 milliseconds. If IF bandwidth is decreased to only 10 Hz, the sweep time becomes much larger, over 200 seconds. But the noise in the stop bands has been reduced by approximately 25 dB, allowing a much more accurate measurement of the stop band attenuation or rejection provided by this filter. The last step in making filter measurements is performing a calibration, and this should be done after configuring the measurement parameters, such as frequency range, number of sweep points, IF bandwidth, etc. On the ZMB3000, calibration is configured, run, and managed via the calibration menu, where the desired calibration type and parameters can be accessed. Calibration is important because it can be used to remove the effect of cables, connectors, etc. from the test setup. And this is needed to obtain accurate VNA measurement results, including filter measurements. In the interest of time, we won't cover calibration in this presentation, so please see the ZMB3000 documentation and or related resources and presentations for more information on how to perform an appropriate calibration. By default, measurement sweeps are run automatically and continuously, and for filter transmission measurements, results are most often shown as a trace of magnitude in dB as a function of frequency. In many cases, markers are placed on the trace in order to obtain more precise numerical results, either as absolute values or as values relative to a user-defined reference. Note that the ZMB3000 also supports a variety of marker search functions, such as finding the maximum trace value or the 3 dB points. And as we'll see in a moment, the ZMB also supports special filter-specific measurement functions. Before we move on to reflection measurements, let's spend a few minutes looking at four additional ZMB3000 functions that are helpful when measuring filters, namely, band filter search, enhanced dynamic range, segmented sweep, and averaging. The band filter search function automatically locates trace segments which have either a band pass or a band stop shape. It then automatically places markers on important trace points and uses these markers to calculate important filter parameters. These include bandwidth, center frequency, 
the upper and lower edges, quality factor, and insertion loss. These values are all displayed on screen along with the marker values themselves. To configure band filter measurements, simply select marker and then band filter. The default attenuation value used to define the passband is the standard 3dB, but this is also user adjustable. The trace region containing the band pass can be determined either based on the maximum trace value or based on a user placed marker. In addition, the band filter search can be limited to a defined frequency or evaluation range. Note that in most cases, the default values for all of these parameters will produce proper results. The settings and behavior are similar when using the band filter feature to evaluate band stop or notch filters as well. Another useful filter measurement feature is Enhanced Dynamic Range or EDR. EDR improves dynamic range by using both the reference and the measurement receiver of the port measuring the filter output. Since the measurement receiver is better suited for measurement of higher powers, and the reference receiver is better suited for measuring lower powers. EDR is enabled by default, but can be turned on and off under Channel, Channel Config mode. This feature is particularly beneficial when power at the receiver port is minus 15 dBm or less. And in these cases, EDR can improve dynamic range by about 10 to 20 dB. EDR is very helpful when measuring high performance filters, that is filters with high levels of attenuation or rejection. But keep in mind that EDR can only be used when making transmission or S21 type measurements. Let's look at an example of EDR. Here, if we disable EDR, we can only measure a stop band attenuation of approximately 60 dB. However, if EDR is enabled, dynamic range is increased, and in this case we can measure a stop band attenuation of approximately 78 dB, an improvement of almost 20 dB. Please keep in mind that EDR is on by default when making transmission measurements on the ZMB3000. The next function we'll look at is segmented sweeps, which divide the sweep range into multiple subranges or segments. Segments are smaller frequency ranges within the total frequency range. Each segment has its own measurement parameters, meaning that the start and stop frequency, number and spacing of points, bandwidth, power, etc., can be set differently for each segment. Using segments for filter measurements can increase measurement speed, provide greater accuracy or resolution, and can be used to optimize dynamic range. As shown in this example, more closely spaced points can be used to provide greater resolution for the more interesting parts of a filter trace, such as the passband. And fewer points can be configured for less interesting regions in order to reduce overall measurement time. Let's look at an example of measuring a filter using an unsegmented sweep. Here we want to measure a passband that's approximately 30 MHz wide. We'd like to measure this passband using a 100 kHz step size and an IF bandwidth of 10 kHz. If we use a linear sweep, as shown here, the same step size and IF bandwidth will be used for every point in the trace, even those outside of the passband. And the total measurement time for each sweep will be approximately 543 milliseconds. We could, however, make the same measurement using a segmented sweep by creating a sweep with three segments, one for the pass band and one each for the lower and upper stop bands. In this example, we're primarily concerned with the pass band, so we increase the step size and IF bandwidth outside of the pass band to 1.5 MHz and 100 kHz, respectively. As a result, the overall measurement time drops to 113 milliseconds, which is a roughly five-fold improvement in test time, but which does not cause any loss of resolution in our measurement of the passband. The final filter measurement feature we'll look at is averaging, which displays a single trace 
that's the average of multiple traces. This is enabled under the Power Bandwidth Average menu, with the user defining the number of traces to average. Keep in mind that the measurement time will increase as the number of averages increases. Averaging is useful in that it makes it easier to get stable measurements of power in noisy regions of the trace. And for filter measurements, this usually corresponds to measurements within the stop bands. It is, however, very important to note that unlike lowering the IF bandwidth or enabling EDR, averaging does not reduce the amount of noise in the measurement. It simply makes it easier to read or measure the average value of the noise. The ZMB3000 supports several different averaging types, but for filter measurements, it's best to either leave this on the auto setting or to use a setting flatten noise. Let's see how averaging can help in filter measurements. On the left, we have a trace with no averaging, and on the right, we see a trace with averaging enabled and an average count of 20. As can clearly be seen, averaging produces a more stable result in the stop bands, but has little effect outside of these noisy regions. And again, note that averaging does not lower the measured noise in the same way as reducing IF bandwidth or enabling enhanced dynamic range. Before we end this presentation, let's spend a few minutes going over filter reflection measurements. The steps in making reflection measurements are essentially the same as for transmission measurements, with the greatest differences being selecting the measurement type and how results are viewed or analyzed. Recall that on the ZMB3000, measurement type is selected using measurement S parameters. Reflection measurements are normally S11 measurements, with a filter input connected to port 1 on the ZMB. Several types of trace formats are appropriate when making filter reflection measurements. dbmag is used when evaluating results in terms of return loss, and SWR is used when evaluating reflected power on a linear scale. And finally, a Smith chart display can be used to visualize the complex impedance of the filter input as a function of frequency. Let's look at two examples. Recall that most filters are reflective, so a bandpass filter will show a high return loss within its passband. And this can easily be seen by looking at a plot of magnitude as a function of frequency. Another way to characterize a filter's reflection characteristics is using the Smith chart. On a Smith chart, better impedance matches are closer to the center, and worse impedance matches are nearer to the edge of the chart. So the passband of a filter corresponds to the sections of the trace which pass closest to the center of the Smith chart. Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodian Schwartz ZMB3000 Vector Network Analyzer can be used to make filter measurements quickly and accurately, including both transmission, or S21 measurements, and reflection, or S11 measurements. All measurement parameters are user configurable, and results can be displayed in a variety of formats. In this presentation, we've shown how to configure and interpret measurements using the ZMB's touchscreen and graphical user interface. But the ZMB also supports remote control and Skippy-based test automation. In addition to standard VNA measurement functions, the ZMB3000 also supports several functions which are helpful when measuring filters. These include band filter search for automatically calculating important filter parameters, Enhanced Dynamic Range, which aids in measuring high-performance filters. Segmented Sweeps for optimizing speed, accuracy, and dynamic range. And Averaging to improve measurements in the stop band. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the ZMB3000 Filter Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about the ZMB3000, filter measurements, or other test and measurement topics from Rodian and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at rody-schwartz.com.